everyone, Cleo here and welcome to my channel and today I'm deciding to drastically change my November TBR. It's not drastically changing it but <laughs> I am going to make it a little bit different than what I had foreseen. Um, there are multiple reasons for this. Part of me knows that I'm not being, going to be able to finish another book in the month of November if I stick to my current TBR. Part of me uh, is just really excited to read this one book and uh, that part is part that I'm definitely going to let overrule whatever objections I might have. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it more later but I feel like I love having TBRs, you know, I didn't used to have them and ever since I started using book, uh, started making booktube videos I started to um, really use the tool of a um, TBR and it got me to read a whole lot more, it also got me to schedule in some books that I've been planning to read forever but I've never gotten around to. But so uh, finally what I do feel like is it is it I feel restricted to choose books in the moment itself from time to time. You know, sometimes you pick up a book and you're like, oh, I really, oh, really I want to read this, but yeah, I still need to finish this and this and this this month, and then sometimes I might even have plans for the next month already. And so sometimes I, I find myself not picking up a book that I'm super looking forward to reading just because it doesn't fit in with my TBR. And that's why I definitely want to just overthrow my TBR at this point and squeezing a book in there that wasn't planned. I hope to still be able to finish my 2019 TBR. Uh, I just hope to be shifting all of this reading to the month of December, which might be a big, um, might be a bit of a problem, but hey, let's see. So I've got my video uh, uploading to YouTube at the moment. I've got my uh, raw material uploading in the editor so that in a couple of minutes I might do some little uh, edits to another video first and then I will be starting a new book. The book that I'm starting has arrived this morning. It was published on Tuesday and I'm talking about Starside by Brandon Sanderson. I don't know whether you have a super good view on it. So um, this isn't the perfect lens for this angle but I didn't feel like changing out my lens or anything like that, so I'm hoping that the 35 is working on for the, It seems like I'm very far away from you guys, and so I don't have a clear view on how clearly I'm in schedule. By the way, I've got two uh, nice little assistants with me here for this video today. Um, Star Side by Brandon Sanderson is the sequel to Skyward. Uh, Skyward came out last year, I only read it in June, which is not to say anything about my enthusiasm about the book, it's just what I mentioned before, me needing to find a place for it in my TBR. And so I definitely didn't want the same to happen to Star Side. Uh, I definitely wanted to get around to it as fast as possible. Uh, I have read quite a few Brandon Sanderson's, I definitely haven't read all of his works. Uh, there are definitely some bigger <laughs> Brandon Sanderson geeks out there. But I really do love his fantasy and so I really also wanted to give his YA sci-fi a go. So Starside is the sequel to Skyward as I said before which was his first YA uh, sci-fi. I thought the genre and the age group worked really well, really well for uh, Brandon Sanderson. I was a bit hesitant at first and like I hope that his uh, YA like, I hope that I'm not going to be disappointed by his YA because uh, YA has been letting me down from time to time. But uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the main character of this series is a girl called Spencer. So Spencer is a little bit of a troubled character in the sense that her father used to be uh, a pilot who was part of the like Sky Brigade and he flew fighter pilot, uh, he flew fighter, how do you call that? <laughs> um, and so he was a fighter pilot. Oh, and so he was a fighter pilot. But then at some point he abandoned ship, and that is uh, absolutely not accepted in this society. So the society that we are following is very much focused on bravery. Ba bravery is like the biggest ideal to strive for, and so we get a sort of society in which um, you get a lot of arrogance, a lot of um, recklessness, and so. Uh, bravery is always um, celebrated versus if somebody shows a little bit of reluctance or a little bit of, of trepidation then that's immediately labeled as that like, cowardice is like so you don't so you are too much of a coward to do this in, rather than uh, accepting that somebody might have very valid um, 
reservations about a certain plan. But since Spensa uh, wants to follow in her father's footsteps, she wants to become a fighter pilot as well. Uh, but she is up against some very big, big odds. <coughs> But so she's against some very big odds because of her father's reputation and so the people in Flight Academy actually want to try and keep, and keep her out. So I'm going to do this spoiler free. I might do a spoiler filled section at the end of the vlog. But uh, Starside is going to be the sequel. I'm so looking forward to it. Spensa in principle is the sort of character that wouldn't suit me. She's like very proud. She's always... She's arrogant, she's always um, like, she's very hot tempered and things like that, which is, indeed, which is very different from my personality and so something that I don't always uh, appreciate in a character, but I really learned to love Spencer throughout. She's constantly struggling with her own self image and uh, with her reaction towards others and so she is somewhat, uh, though, she, though she has this like um, outward bravado, though, um, and though she come, and so she comes across as being very self-confident, as being reckless even, but she does have inner turmoil that it makes her very interesting and makes her very reliable, uh, relatable. Be, uh, besides, uh, and besides Spencer, there are also some very interesting characters. There's uh, Doomslock, which everybody's a big favorite. Uh, favorite. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, the character of Doomslock, and then there's a sort of robot that you will fall in love with throughout. So, Starfire is a sequel, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I'm going to be diving into the reading pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to try and force myself to do some edits to my December TBR first, uh, because I definitely don't want to fall behind schedule on, on that. So, hopefully, so the plan is to finish this book still in the month of November. I have checked, so in June I, st I finished Skyward in two days, on a, started on a Thursday evening, the same as I'm doing now. Um, the all, and in <laughs> and another thing that's working in my favor here is the fact that it's actually shorter than Skyward. So in principle, it should be doable. However, I don't want to fall behind on my schedule, my filming schedule for uh, December. So we'll see what's manageable on Saturday. But in any case, I'll check in with you guys later when I'm a bit further into the book and can give you some of my thoughts on like how I'm enjoying this one everyone so yeah uh, I didn't check in with you guys last night anymore basically it was just too um, tired to actually still want to put in the effort to set up the camera but so uh, I'm about 100 pages into the book and I'm absolutely enjoy enjoying it so far so I won't go into the premise too far but basically we are following the sort of same teams of like uh, looking at uh, cowardice versus um, bravery so there's still very much a emphasis on bravery in this society and uh, we are getting introduced to another society in which uh, there's this sort of whole thing of bravado is seen as being aggressive more than as being brave and so this whole society is more about peace about understanding and so we're seeing a very different way for uh, a society to be able to rule uh, so from the point of view of our main character the only way in which a society would be able to rule would be through aggressive uh, behavior to through warfare to things like that and she's discovering another society that's more based on the idea of like peace and uh, controlling people through by controlling their uh, movements by being able to control traffic uh, between different worlds and things like that uh, apart from that I really really love being back in this world like being back with Spencer so Spencer is a lot more subdued uh, in her uh, like brashness in this book at this point uh, I think it was an evolution we saw happen throughout Skyward and that's taking on uh, that's continuing in this book but she's still a very lovely character to read from. From, uh, we still get this sort of like um, sense of like struggle with herself and finding out who she is which is going to be explored further throughout this book I assume and uh, we are being reintroduced again to some of the wonderful characters that we had in book one and uh, still very much a favor uh, um, still very much a fan of Anne Bolt and of Doomslug and so uh, I'm just be glad being back in this world we also start like in the middle of some action sequence so getting a lot of uh, fighting and flying uh, in that very beginning and so it's very nice to be back to that whole sort of scenario I had forgotten some of the background about the human race in this world 
Uh, and so it's very interesting to go back into this world and to look at uh, more information being dug, about, dug up about that. But so basically I started, I finished last night at the end of part one where we were really getting a sort of like handle on what the storyline is going to be. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to go into it, but yeah, things are taking off uh, very quickly and so I'm enjoying. Uh, I'm hoping to get like halfway through the book at this point and so having like one half left for tomorrow. But I also want to film a lot and um, edit a lot tomorrow, so we'll see what I can manage tomorrow. But I'm still positive that I might actually be able to do, finish, to pull it off in the month of November. But I definitely don't want it to be a race neither, you know. If uh, tomorrow uh, I, tur I find like, okay, uh, I won't be able to finish it, I also won't be pushing myself just to get it in in November, you know. I might as well finish in December if that turns out to be better with my schedule. But so yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Now I'm just going to have a quick dinner. So I'm making pasta, pasta with garlic. Uh, easiest thing to make, super quick and super delicious. And then uh, I will be sitting down and reading some more in uh, Star Sides. Hey everyone, so I didn't really reach the page goal for yesterday. I am a little under halfway. So I am currently at like page 180 of the 450 or something like that so yeah I'm not really at the halfway mark but uh, apparently I didn't have to film as much as I thought I had to today but I do think I need to edit quite a bit so um, we'll see how the day goes tomorrow I'm filming my November wrap up so we'll see whether I make it or not uh, and you will probably see that before you see this video actually, so I don't know when this video is going to be uh, planned in because basically it was just an impromptu decision on my part to do a reading vlog on it. But so yeah, I filmed the two videos I had to film today. I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be editing a video now that needs to come out today. I already edited a video that's coming out tomorrow. Then maybe I'll try to get in a third and fourth video maybe today just to get a little bit of a move on on December because I'm filming a lot for December so I also need to be editing a lot for December and where filming can already be a problem because I have to film in the weekend because of the lighting situation uh, editing is actually the thing that I procrastinate on the most but so yeah uh, I hope to be starting so as I said, I hope to be editing a video now and then I'll take some time to read a few chapters, then maybe edit one again and then read a few more. Uh, if all goes well, I might be able to finish at this point uh, today, but uh, as I said yesterday already, like, if I don't make it, it's not the end of the world, you know, if it gets finished in December instead of November. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I think I had a little bit of a, like, like let's say a dull moment in the book at the moment so I like we part one really ended on so like a sort of like cliffhanger and then I felt like part two took the pacing down a little bit again which isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just that I was like in a mood for super fast paced stuff and so uh, I felt like part two was a little bit like slower paced and that it wasn't really vibing with me all as much but still I enjoyed a lot of the characters and uh, the banter between characters and things like that but um, I'm really looking forward for things to pick up again uh, it's a brand the Sanderson I know it definitely will uh, but so I'm going to be keeping myself from it for a little bit longer just to finish a reading vlog uh, that's going to be coming out the last day of November which is today I'm <laughs> cutting it quite close I know but uh, yeah and then I can get back to reading I don't have any plans for today and that's the reason why I actually think I might be able to finish this but that's also meaning that this reading vlog is going to be very boring because I'm, all I'm going to do, be doing is eating and reading and editing but I hope you still enjoy so yeah check in with you guys later <sighs> so I am finally going to sit down for dinner. It is 8 o'clock. I ordered my food at 5. <laughs> and then I had this whole thing going on with Uber Eats. I've been reimbursed in the meantime, but now I'm finally getting around to... So yeah, I'm going to be enjoying my dinner and I'm going to be 
trying to read some at the same time, however I don't want to get like grease smears all over my book or anything like that. Uh, I'm definitely not going to be able to finish it tonight, that's definitely for sure. I've been actually quite tired the whole week, I've been like... I think it all started on Tuesday when I went to see The Irishman in movie theaters. And uh, if you know anything about The Irishman, it is a movie that is three hours and a half long. So even though it started at 4.30, <laughs> it was only finished at 9 and then I went out for dinner because I still hadn't eaten at that point with my colleagues. So basically it was like almost, um, it was like almost midnight when I went to sleep, which is way past my bedtime during the week. And then on Wednesday, I also went to sleep almost around midnight. And then on Thursday, I received a book, so I also went to sleep almost at midnight. So you're seeing a pattern here where I've been like super tired and so actually sat down um, a while back and slept full. And like I w the intention was not to sleep, the intention was just to watch a booktube video while uh, lying down. But I just fell asleep a couple of times in there. So. Uh, yeah, all, to, all of that to say that my reading pace hasn't been the best one at this point. Uh, I'm now about 240 pages in, so I have some 200 pages to go, which means I definitely won't be finishing in November, uh, which is today. <laughs> uh, I also don't think that I'll finish it tomorrow, maybe, we'll see, but um, so I've decided to just see where I get tonight and then uh, see what I can get done tomorrow, but in any case I'm not going to be... Um, forcing myself or anything like that. Uh, it does mean that the month of December is going to be very much packed with books in my TBR, but in any case, if I don't make that TBR, I can always switch them to January. But so, that's just to give you a little bit of an update on my reading for today. Uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to give an update later on when I've like finished my reading for today, but um, yeah, most likely I'll, fin I'll give you an update tomorrow. So I am back to enjoying it. So as I, I think in my last update I was saying that uh, it kind of got to a slow part and now we're back to like space training stuff and things like that. But all the things that really were enjoyable, uh, like really like, it's one of the main elements. <laughs> so the space training stuff was also a very prominent part in book one and part of the big reason why I love book one. So it's another element that's like reoccurring now in book two. Uh, I am starting to see hints of where this story is going, if, of like the big secret that she's trying to uncover and starting to have speculative ideas about what the secret might be. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing whether I'm right about that or not. Uh, there's also an interesting new character which is like this is sort of like alien species that is like half male and half female. Basically it's just like uh, every one of these aliens, they like merge together with a uh, different alien in order to reproduce and then uh, they kind of make a sort of like draft character. Basically the, um, they sort of make a baby but before the baby is actually born there's a sort of draft version as they call it and then they can actually like decide whether they want to go through with it or whether they want to change the personality of that draft. So if the draft isn't like living up to their expectations they will do sort of scramble and end up with a different version of the draft and only when they're really happy does this draft get actually born and uh, becomes a permanent uh, being in this world. So very interesting concept, uh, Brandon Sanderson is always coming up with these interesting ideas. So yeah, uh, looking forward to it continuing and uh, I will be doing so right now. Not sure with the pizza whether I will maybe first watch a, book a booktube video or something like that. But so yeah, checking with you guys later. Okay guys, I finished Starside. So <laughs> this is not okay. This ended on a total um, cliffhanger. So as far as I'm aware, Skyward didn't end on, on a cliffhanger and like based on like how Starside's uh, and started, I'm pretty sure that's the case, but this ended on such a cliffhanger. I want to start the third book immediately, but I don't think he's even started writing it at this point, so yeah. Uh, I, I'm afraid that we're in for a bit of a wait for this one, but uh, I just gotta say I'm absolutely in love with this story. Uh, I know that like one of my previous um, 
check-ins with you guys I was saying that I kind of felt like the pacing was a little bit off at that point but that definitely goes away when we are nearing the end so I do think that there is this part in this book in which the pacing is going down a whole lot um, I'm not going to go too much into uh, the like spoilers for this book or anything like that or the setup for this book just in case of like people who haven't read Skyward even and might not know uh, enough about what happened in that one um, but so we are going a little bit, we are inter being introduced to like um, different elements to this world that we, are, uh, that we are visiting in this book and that kind of brings the pacing down a little bit because we have to be introduced to all of these new uh, elements so there's a whole lot of world build building like let's say around the 20% mark until around the 50% mark or something like that that's a very rough estimation but there's a lot of world building at that part of the book and that kind of slowed things down for me a little bit at that point but I was also aware of course that it was I, I understood while we were reading that that it was necessary and I also understood that we were moving towards something bigger and that it was just like a temporary slowing down of the pacing uh, in order to be able to set up for a bigger uh, grander story afterwards uh, one of the negatives about this book it's not necessarily negative but um, is that due to circumstances we are taking Spencer away from her familiar um, like from the people that she is um, so due to circumstances we are taking Spencer away from like the people that she has grown close to throughout Skyward and I really started to miss those connections in book two I'm sure that that is also intentional and uh, she does make other connections in this book as well and I'm hopeful that that will mean that in book three maybe only in book four but I guess in book three hopefully in book three we will see her uh, we'll see all of these connections coming together we very very slightly get a like coalescence I also already thought it was going to happen in this book but in the end it happens differently than what I was expecting and that's also one of the geniuses about this book because I had a theory about how it worked so there's a certain mystery that she's trying to unravel and I started to feel like Samson was giving us hints about what was actually happening but basically Samson was trying to lead us off course so basically I was just following uh, the kind of clues that Samson was giving us was just kind of like giving us a, a, a wrong track more or less not entirely wrong track but still it was leading us along a certain way and I just thought like huh I know what you're, what you're doing there Samson but I actually didn't know what I was doing so kudos for, to him for that because he managed that very masterfully um, another thing that I'm not necessarily a fan of is it's, it does something that I feel is more or less typical in YA. It's not necessarily typical but I've definitely seen it done before so it's sort of like um, and the way he handles his romance here isn't necessarily what I would like uh, to see happening. I very much liked how the romance was like super super low key in book one which kind of like hinted at but it didn't go further than that. In this one it somewhat goes further but also in another way it goes backwards. So I won't, I won't say too much because I don't want to spoil too much so I'll just leave it as a super vague, uh, maybe a little bit untrue uh, statement. But so I didn't necessarily like how the romance developed in this book. Um, and that kind of makes me a little bit hesitant about Stormlight Archive because there's a possible romance there that I don't want to see happening but I was like yeah Sanderson won't do that but in this book he proves that he might do certain romance stuff that I don't like but so okay let's not digress into Stormlight Archive so um, overall my general impression of uh, Starside is that it's definitely worth it in case you've read Skyward and you're kind of Hasn't about Starside, I don't know why you would be, but uh, definitely go ahead, definitely read it. Uh, definitely do it because uh, Brandon Sanderson has not been doing a whole lot of publicity around this book because he's finishing Stormlight Archive 4. And his publicist was kind of worried about that, so let's prove them wrong and let's all massively read this book because it's totally worth it. If you haven't started Skyward yet, definitely go ahead, start it. It's really great. Um, I, ha I have multiple times been saying on my channel that I would like to get more into YA, but uh, that all the YAs that I've been reading recently have constantly let me down. And even the majority of the YAs that I've started on my channel this year have been 
in some way or another disappointments to me, but Skyward by Brandon Sanderson is the, ex is the exception to that. I read Skyward this year, absolutely loved it, left a red star side, loved it, a little bit less than Skyward let me say, um, but that's just because of that little bit of a lull that was in there, I feel like um, Skyward managed to do the world to integrate the world building into the action a little bit better than this one does um, but maybe that's also because in this one we're not de not just dealing with world building and um, so we're not just dealing with world building and action at the same time but we also like we've got we've gotten used to certain connections between Spencer and other characters and now we just have to start to rebuild these connections because due to the circumstances that I vaguely refer to she is no longer with those people and so she has to make new collections and so we also have to hit like a reset button and I think it was just a little bit that you know it was somewhat my resistance to her being in a new situation my resistance to me her being away from these uh, people that I've grown to love so much. Uh, for those who are hesitant because of what I'm saying, you definitely get uh, screen time with these different people that she, she loves. You just don't get as much as before. And it's mostly uh, at the beginning of the novel that uh, we are seeing her with her previous um, with the previous connections that she's made. But so yeah, I think it it's done super well. Uh, we get um, a lot of we also get a very interesting uh, storyline with the character of Mbots. Um, so in the first book, we already we already saw a huge development to his personality, uh, and in book two, he is dealing with a crisis of identity. And then uh, we are actually also getting some more on Doomslug. So yeah, this is really uh, I really loved it. I loved it a lot. I'm, now totally hyped for like reading a third one, but as I said before, like uh, there is no prognosis on this one, you know, on his website it's not mentioned yet, so I don't think he might have started writing parts for it already, but I think it's it's definitely not going to be for 2020, for example, so we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, this definitely got my endorsement, I'm so happy that I read it and I've started the month of December very well now because it's the 2nd of December and now I finished my first book. So I'm very happy, uh, definitely let me know down below what you feel of this sort of like reading vlog review version. Normally I just do like a sort of review after I finish the book, I don't give you, to my, I don't, uh, like give you my thoughts about the book while I'm reading it. Definitely let me know if you prefer this to like a, a just like generic review or if you prefer to just have like the review so that you don't have to like um, hear my, me explain uh, the book 3000 times over again. I don't know whether I managed to um, keep it somewhat structured or whether I was basically just saying the same thing over and over again. But yeah, uh, I real so definitely let me know down below and that way I can prove uh, for, for um, future, not for previous, and that way I can improve for like future videos. Um, I might still do a review on this because like now you've just got like super scattered uh, thoughts about this and not really a, a comprehensive look of what I feel about it. On the other hand I also don't want to be spoiling a lot and I feel like I cannot say too much about Starside without possibly spoiling Skyward for people who haven't read that so maybe I'll do sort of like a Starside review for people who have read Skyward. <laughs> In any case, let me finally end this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had as much fun as me um, reading this and for you then watching this. Uh, so yeah, I love sharing my thoughts with you guys. Definitely let's chat further down in the comments below. See you.